Hello everyone, I am Kanchan and welcome to Apti Plus Academy for Civil Services, a premier institution for preparing for civil services in India. Today, I am here for a daily news and editorial analysis for 12th and 13th of March 2024. And this editorial analysis is going to be important for all three stages of UPSC, which are UPSC prelims, mains and interview process. And apart from UPSC exams, this editorial analysis is going to be important for all the government exams in India. So without further delay, let us begin the analysis. पुलिस को देख के लोग सेफ फील करने की बजाय घबराते हैं एक गली जिसमें पुलिस खड़ी है उस गली से इंसान तभी निकलता है जब उसके पास दूसरा रास्ता ना हो जाने का तो इन सारी चीजों के पीछे रीजन क्या है देखिए हमारे कुछ बेसिक राइट्स हैं जो हमें ना पता होने की वजह से छोटी छोटी जगह पे हमें पुलिस से डर लगता है एक छोटी सी एफ लिखवाने के लिए आपको जुगाड़ की जरूरत इसलिए पड़ती है क्योंकि एक्चुअल में एफ लिखवाने का जो प्रोसेस है वो हमें पता ही नहीं है और कुछ लोगों को तो यहां तक नहीं पता कि अगर पुलिस घर से उठा रही है तो उसको क्या क्या रूल्स फॉलो करने होते हैं और ये सब ना पता होने की वजह से जब भी आपका पाला इन सब चीजों से पड़ता है तो आपको डर ही लगेगा और ये जो राइट्स हैं ये इतने बेसिक होते हैं कि स्कूल में होने चाहिए बट अनफॉर्चुनेटली नहीं है आप किसी बच्चे को एक बार ये सारी चीजें बता दोगे वो तो पूरी जिंदगी नहीं भूलेगा Recently, Supreme Court ruled that all the information related to the cognizable offence must be registered as FIR rather than registering in general diary. And in this context, this news becomes important for UPSC prelims perspective and also for the GS paper 2 of UPSC mains. And under GS paper 2, this topic caters to the syllabus, the judgments and cases. So in this topic, we are going to discuss about the section 154 of the Code of Criminal Procedure and uh, the section 44 of the Police Act of 1861. Then we'll discuss about the general diary and uh, the first information report, which is FIR. Then we'll discuss about the difference between the GD and the FIR. So let us begin the analysis. Uh, so talking about the context of the news, the case where the Supreme Court had previously ruled that the information disclosing the cognizable offence must be recorded as the first information report was the Lalita Kumari versus government of Uttar Pradesh and others. And in this case, Supreme Court had ruled that the information disclosing the cognizable offence must be recorded as FIR in a book maintained by the officer in charge of the police station, not as the general diary. So, so basically the Supreme Court ruled that the first information report should be given the precedence over the general diary in case of the cognizable offence. And, and in this case, Supreme Court analyzed the interplay between the section 154 of the Code of Criminal Procedure and the section 44 of the Police Act of 1861. And the Supreme Court concluded that the FIR registration takes the precedence over the GD, that is general diary. And the section 154 of the CRPC deals with the cognizable cases in India and the section 44 of the Police Act of 1861 deals with the general diary. So this was the news in detail. Now, now let us discuss about the general diary in detail. The general diary which is also called the station diary or the daily diary in some states are basically maintained under the provisions of the section 44 of the Indian Police Act of 1861. And the general diary includes the departure and the arrival of police staff, the handling over or the taking over of the charges, arrest of a person, details of law and order, duties and the visit of the senior officers. So apart from the charges framed against the offenders or the criminal charges or the arrest of the person, there are many general provisions in the general diary. Additionally, the general diary summarizes the first information report that is registered at the police station. So the first information report or the FIR has also been registered in the police station. So the GD also summarizes the first information report. The most important fact about the GD entry and the FIR is that the GD entry reference is noted in the FIR book while the uh, FIR number is mentioned in the GD entry. So you have to remember this point that the GD entry reference is noted in FIR book and uh, the FIR number is noted in the GD entry. So these were the important facts about the general diary. Now let us discuss about the FIR in detail. The first information report or FIR is a written document prepared by the police officer based on the information given by the aggrieved person or any other person 
either in writing or made orally about the commission of cognizable offense. So the first information report basically deals with the cognizable offense only. So the cognizable offense is basically an offense where the police officer can investigate the cases against the offenders without the permission of the magistrate. So in case of cognizable offense, there is no permission of the magistrate required uh, for investigating the cases. And the FIR is only relevant in case of the cognizable offense. And the investigation is started only after filing the FIR. So this is very important point that only after filing the FIR, the investigation is started. And who can lose the FIR? Anyone who knows about the commission of cognizable offense can file an FIR and it is not necessary that the victim of the crime should file the FIR. So anyone who knows about the cognizable offense or anyone uh, who have seen the crime or anyone who knows the victim can file the FIR. So these were the important facts about the FIR and the general diary. Now let us understand the difference between the GD and FIR in detail. So far as the difference between the general diary and the first information report or FIR is concerned, a copy of each FIR is sent to the superior officers and to the concerned judicial magistrate. So the copy of the FIR must be sent to the judicial magistrate. And as far as general diary is concerned, a copy of GD is not required to be sent to the judicial magistrate. So this is a basic difference between the judicial magistrate and the FIR. And the magistrate of the district shall have the liberty to call for an inspection of such GD or FIR. So if the district magistrate or the magistrate of the district requires that the FIR or the GD is to be inquired or the FIR or GD has to be discussed or should be inspected, then they can inspect the FIR or GD. And the signature of the complainant is obtained in the FIR book, but the signature of complainant is not required to be taken in case of general diary. So this is also an important difference and the general diary is an internal police record. While in case of FIR, a copy of the FIR is provided to the complainant. So if you ever happen to file an FIR, you must receive a copy of FIR to you. So the FIR, so the copy of FIR is also given to the complainant. And most importantly, the FIR forms the basis of the criminal proceedings and investigations and uh, it is admissible as an evidence in court of law. But the general diary does not form the basis of the criminal proceedings and the investigations and the GD is not admissible as an evidence in court of law. Uh, so these are the important difference between the general diary and the first information report that you need to know from the UPC prelims perspective. Now let us move into another topic of discussion for today. Before I move into another topic of discussion for today, I have an important announcement for you all. Those who are appearing for UPC CAC 2024, Nisei All India Test Series program of the APT Plus Academy for Civil Services is must attempt for all the aspirants because this test series contains the 4900 high quality questions curated by the experts from APT Plus Academy for Civil Services. And this test series also contains the recorded discussion on these questions and the most important feature of this Nisai All India test series program is that the money will be refunded to the students if the students finds this test to be unsatisfactory. So hurry up and register for this test now and you can register for this test by scanning the QR code given here and you can also register for this test by going through the link given in the description section. So this, so this was an important announcement for you all. Now let us move into another topic of discussion for today. This microchip can take up to 26 weeks to make. In its as many as 100 layers, billions of transistors are packed into an area about the size of a fingernail. They're the brains behind almost everything we use in our increasingly electronic world. Here's how these complex, tiny devices are made. The process begins with silicon-rich sand. Why silicon? Silicon is a semiconductor. It's the sweet spot between an insulator and a pure conductor. That means its properties such as its conductivity can be altered by adding impurities or doping to meet the needs of different electronic devices. This also allows us to control the electrical signals that pass through. Silicon is also abundant. It's one of the 10 most common elements found on Earth. Recently, the Union Cabinet approved the three semiconductor units in India within the next 100 days. 
And in this context, this news becomes important from the UPC prelims perspective and also for the GS paper 3 of UPC mains. And under GS paper 3, this news caters to this levels growth and development and the indigenization of technology. And in this topic, we are going to discuss about the development of the semiconductors and the display and manufacturing ecosystems in India initiative. So this is an initiative under which these three semiconductor units in India will be built and we will also discuss about the semiconductors, what are semiconductors in detail, then we will discuss the Indian electronic sector in detail. So let us begin the analysis. So as we just discussed, the context of the news is that the union cabinet led by the prime minister approved the establishment of the three semiconductor units as a part of development of semiconductors and display manufacturing ecosystems in India initiative. And under this initiative, three units would be built, which are the semiconductor fab in Dholera in Gujarat, the semiconductor ATMP, which is assembly, testing, marking and packaging unit in Murigao in Assam. Semiconductor ATMP unit for, for specialized chips would be built in Sanad and Gujarat. So these are the three units which have been approved by government of India under this initiative. And the aim of this initiative is to generate the significant employment opportunities and to accelerate India's capabilities in cheap fabrication and advanced packaging technologies. So these are the important facts that you need to know about the initiative or the uh, three units which are being established by government of India under this initiative. Now let us understand about the semiconductors and the type of semiconductors in detail. <coughs> semiconductors are any class of crystalline solids which are intermediate in electrical conductivity between the conductor and insulator. So the semiconductors are basically intermediate between the conductors and the insulator. And the semiconductors are basically employed in the manufacturing of various kind of electronic devices, which includes diodes, transistors and integrated circuits. So the components which are used in diodes, transistors and integrated circuits we use in the mobile phones and the computers, etc. are made using the semiconductors. Semiconductor devices have wide application because of their compactness, reliability, power efficiency and low cost. With the use of semiconductors, we can include various parts and components in the small uh, area and for this reason, semiconductors are very compact and they are also very reliable and uh, the, they provide very high power efficiency. So for this reason, semiconductors are very useful and so far as the uses of semiconductors are concerned, semiconductors are used in power devices, optical sensors, light emitting diodes including the solid state lasers. So the semiconductors have uses in various devices including the power devices, optical sensors, light emitting diodes including the solid state lasers. So these are the applications of the semiconductors and talking about the semiconductor fabrication which is also referred as fab is the it is the process of manufacturing semiconductor devices such as integrated circuits and transistors. So the process by which we make the integrated circuits and transistors is called the fab or the semiconductor fabrication. So these were the important facts about the semiconductors. Now let us understand the different types of semiconductors which we know about. And there are basically two types of semiconductors, which is the intrinsic semiconductor and the extrinsic semiconductor. And the intrinsic semiconductor is the pure form of semiconductor. So the semiconductor which is made purely of the silicon, germanium, etc. is the pure form of semiconductor and they are called the intrinsic semiconductors. And the semiconductors which contain the impurity are called the extrinsic semiconductors. And there are two types of extrinsic semiconductors which are N-type and the P-type. And the N-type of semiconductor contains the pentavalent impurity. So the impurity which have been added in the N-type of semiconductor has the 5 valence electron. At the, and the examples of the pentavalent impurities are uh, phosphorus, arsenic, antimony, etc. And the p-type of semiconductors are one where there is trivalent impurity. So the gallium, boron, indium, aluminium, etc. has been added in the p-type of semiconductor. This is called the trivalent impurity because these impurity contains the three valence electrons. So these are the two types of uh, the semiconductors and you need to know about the semiconductor materials and the impurities which have been added there. So these were the important facts about the semiconductors and different types of semiconductors there. So these were the important facts about the semiconductors and these points are very important from the UPC prelims perspective and also for various one day exams. Now let us discuss the important government initiatives that has been taken by government of India in this regard.
So far as the Indian electronic sector is concerned, the Indian electronic sector is tremendously growing with a demand expected to cross $400 billion by 2023-24. The domestic production has grown from US dollar $29 billion in 2014-15 to nearly $70 billion in 2019-20 at the compound annual growth rate of 25%. So this is a huge increase in demand globally and uh, nationally. So far as the semiconductors are concerned, the government of India has started various initiatives in this regard and the schemes such as the scheme for setting up of the compound semiconductors, silicon photonics, sensors fab and the semiconductors assembly, testing, marketing and packaging which is ATMP, OSAT facilities in India has been announced. So this is an important initiative and the design linked incentive with three components which are chip design infrastructure support, product design linked incentive and the deployment linked incentive has been announced and the government of India has also approved plans to set up two chip making facilities in Greater Noida in Uttar Pradesh, uh, Pratis in Gujarat which is about 50 km from the Gandhinagar under the electronic manufacturing clusters scheme which is the EMC scheme. So the two chip making facilities are being built in India and the India Semiconductor Mission was also launched by Government of India in 2021 and this India Semiconductor Mission aims to provide the financial support to the companies investing in semiconductors, display manufacturing and design ecosystem. So these are the important initiatives of Government of India and these schemes are very important from the UPC perspective. Now let us move into another topic of discussion for today. India's commitment to a sustainable future aims for net zero emissions by 2070. At the forefront of this endeavor is the adoption of green hydrogen as a maritime fuel. Bharat ko hydrogen fuel adhari transport ki tarap le jane ka jo amara mission hai usko kochi shipyard aur sasakta kar raha hai. Crafted at Cochin Shipyard stands India's pioneering creation, the first indigenous green hydrogen catamaran vessel. Developed in collaboration with Indian Register of Shipping and KPIT Technologies, this vessel champions urban mobility, setting a remarkable standard for sustainable waterway travel. Following rigorous tests and trials in the Kochi waters to guarantee its efficiency and safety. This vessel is launched today and is set to be deployed in the historic city of Varanasi shortly. The ferry promises to support clean transportation through zero greenhouse gas emissions, quieter movements and lower lifetime operating costs. Designed with urban mobility in mind, similar vessels will soon grace the waterways of other regions. Further, with all the projects unveiled today, VOC port is all set to become India's first hydrogen hub port, catalyzing growth in the country's green hydrogen ecosystem and advancing India's position as a hub for its production and export, aligning with the Prime Minister's vision. Let's unite our efforts and set sail towards a greener future. Recently, Prime Minister Narendra Modi flagged off India's first indigenous hydrogen fuel cell ferry. And in this context, this news becomes important from UPC Prelims perspective. And in this discussion, we are going to discuss about the news in detail. We'll discuss what is the Harit Nauka initiative of Government of India. Then we'll discuss about the hydrogen fuel cell in detail. Now let us begin the analysis. So the recently flagged of India's first indigenously built hydrogen fuel cell ferry was built under the Harit Nauka initiative of Government of India. And apart from launching the hydrogen fuel cell ferry boat in virtual mode, the PM Modi also led down the foundation of the 17,300 crore project, including the outer harbour at the VO Chidambaram port. And this vessel has been built in the Cochin Sibiyat. So these were the important facts about the recent launch of the hydrogen fuel cell ferry by the PM Modi. And this launch of the hydrogen fuel cell ferry is important because uh, it will make uh, the urban mobility smooth, easy through the inland waterways. So the urban mobility will improve. And the vessel also underscores the pioneering step for embracing the clean energy solutions and also aligning with the nation's 
net zero commitments. So the nation's net zero commitments would be uh, boosted by this initiative of the government of India. And talking about the VO Chidambaram port, this port is the first green hydrogen hub port of India. And the projects include the desalination plant, hydrogen production and the bunkering facility. So these are the important facts that you need to know about the recent launch of the uh, hydrogen foil cell ferry boat uh, by PM Modi and also about the VO Chidambaram port. Now let us discuss the Harit Nauka initiative of government of India in detail. As per the guidelines, all the states have to make the efforts to use the green foils for 50% of inland waterways based passenger fleets in the next one decade and 100% by 2025. So, the, so all the states must make the efforts to use the green foils in the inland waterways based passenger fleets. And this initiative is aimed to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions as per the Maritime Amrit Kal Vision of India by 2047. Globally, the shipping industry is increasingly transitioning to the green foils due to environmental regulations, sustainability goals and the advancements in the green foil technologies. And hydrogen is very important because hydrogen and its derivatives are gaining the attention for promising zero emission foil in the industry. Because the hydrogen foil does not have any emissions in the industry and uh, the water and the water is the only emission or the exhaust that comes out from the hydrogen based foils so for this reason hydrogen is very important foil for india so these are the important facts about the harit nauka initiative now let us discuss about the hydrogen foils in detail we use hydrogen as a foil to drive the electrochemical process that produce electricity with water and heat as the only byproducts. So, so, so this is very important because the hydrogen foil only produces water and heat as the byproduct and the emission is near zero for this reason. And the hydrogen is one of the most abundant elements on the earth. And for the abundance of the hydrogen in earth, the hydrogen becomes an important alternative foil uh, for the fossil foils. And so far as the significant of hydrogen foil cells are concerned. The hydrogen foil cells provide the zero emission solutions. So the tailpipe emissions from the hydrogen foil cells are very low and there are no harmful emissions from the hydrogen foil cells such as the sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide, etc. So the emissions are very low from the hydrogen foil cell. So another significance of the hydrogen foil cell is that the hydrogen foil cells make very less noise and for this reason they can be used in premises such as the hospitals. So these are the important facts and the significance of hydrogen foil cells. Now let us see the picture of the hydrogen foil cell and how it works. So this is the picture of the hydrogen foil cell and how it works. So this is the hydrogen foil cell and you can see the hydrogen uh, flow field is inserted in the anode. And at the anode, there is a catalyst called the uh, platinum catalyst, which causes the hydrogen to split into the hydrogen positive ion and the electrons. And there is a membrane called the polymer electrolyte membrane here at the middle. And this polymer electrolyte membrane allows only the positively charged hydrogen to pass through. And the negatively charged electrons has to pass through the external circuit. So this completion of the circuit creates an electrical energy here and this is how the electricity is generated in the hydrogen foil cell and, and at the cathode there is combination of the positively charged hydrogen and electron and the oxygen which forms the water. So the water is exhausted in the exhaust of the hydrogen foil cell. Uh, so the water is the ultimate byproduct of the hydrogen foil cell. So this is the working principle of the hydrogen foil cell and this is how the hydrogen foil cells work. And uh, now let us look at the UPC PYQ that has been asked from this topic. UPC in 2010 asked this question related to the hydrogen foil cell vehicles and the question is hydrogen foil cells produce which one of the following as exhaust so this is a pretty straightforward question so we just discussed about this question recently and comment the answer of this question in the comment section so this was also the last topic of discussion for today and today as well I have got an important quote of the day for you now let us look at the quote that I have got for you. The quote of the day for today is invention is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. And the quote can be tweaked for the aspirants as the success is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. Because success is not quite easy and uh, the perspiration or the effort is must 
and the effort is ultimately determining factor for your success so this was the quote of the day for you and i am concluding today's session with this quote so we'll meet again in the next video till then take care